of the lovely Cyril Gumbratz joining us from Zurich, uh, ETH, ETH, Ether ETH Zurich. I'll let you confirm <laughs> the preferred <laughs> way of saying it. <laughs> And, ETH um, Zurich, yeah. <laughs> okay, excellent. Nice to and meet you. This is a public university based mm -hmm. in Switzerland, so very exciting stuff. And um, yeah, we're just really excited to hear more about this. We've got this uh, lovely slide going, and pass welcome. it off to you. Welcome, Cyril. Take it away. <laughs> Thank you very much, and uh, hi, everyone. I'm very delighted to be here today um, to present to you um, some research project I've done in the past on uh, open hardware innovation uh, and the aim is to uh, tackle the needs of uh, people with disabilities. So um, I'm a PhD candidate at uh, ETH Zurich and I specialize in strategy and innovation. So as you may know, um, people with disabilities often have like very specific needs um, where, you know, generic solutions that exist on the market currently are not really tackling. Um, I'm just sorry, there is a problem with the slide. Um, is that like... Okay, I'm just going to continue. And um, so, yeah. So, and the other problem is that user-centered innovation is often too costly for uh, most individual disabilities. Um, and so user-centered innovation would mean like gathering like some engineers that actually work only for one person. So that is extremely costly. And so open innovation actually in crowdsourcing is actually offering a solution uh, because you can gather a global network of innovators with different technical expertise uh, to address your specific needs. And then from all the different solutions that they propose, you can actually choose uh, one that actually best fit your needs. And the other advantage of open innovation is that all the innovations can then be shared and reused by others that have like similar needs at, uh, at minimal cost. And for that, there's a platform Hackster.io, uh, which is a large crowdsourcing platform focused on hardware innovation. And uh, in this different uh, project, I relied on, on that platform for that. So yeah, there's definitely a problem with the slide, but I, I guess uh, I guess it's okay. Um, so the problem is the the innovators that have this relevant technical expertise, you know, to conceive and implement solutions are usually quite unfamiliar with the disability space because they are not themselves uh, having disabilities. So they actually lack knowledge on what are the specific needs to solve. So they need like, there's a quite a consensus that they need inputs from um, individual disabilities to understand you know, the specific problem and identify solutions that are targeting those problems. The thing is that the knowledge about those needs is very complex uh, and it's, it would be very difficult to transfer all the knowledge that uh, people with disabilities have about their needs and the problems and the solution. So it raised the question of what parts of their knowledge should they prioritize sharing to increase innovation outcomes. And so as you can see below here, we have uh, two banners that were actually crowdsourcing contests that we did on the platform Hackster.io. And so the, it's called Build Together because the idea is that um, people with disabilities and engineers uh, build together. And so what we tried in those different contests is to understand how we can increase innovation outcome for individual disabilities in open innovation context. So I, we had two uh, different crowdsourcing contests. Uh, so the first one ran last year. Um, and we had basically individual disabilities who were sharing knowledge uh, with innovators continuously on Discord channels. And then we had an experiment uh, where um, the innovators were basically divided into two groups without knowing that they were actually divided. Uh, and in what the first group, uh, we prioritized the sharing of what I call tacit knowledge. I'll explain later what it is. And in the other one, we, we, we shared more explicit knowledge. And so we tried to see which one was outperforming. In the second contest that we did, we also had an experiment. Uh, so this one actually ended up, ended very recently. And we had uh, individual disabilities giving feedback to some ideas that the innovator proposed. So the innovator was coming to the contest, proposing an idea, and then you had individual disabilities giving them a one-time feedback. And so we also had an experiment where half of the innovators were receiving feedbacks on their belief about the problems whereas the other were receiving feedback about their belief on the solutions. So, 
yeah, so going back now to the first contest, um, as I said, we had two different groups. One where we shared uh, tacit knowledge. So tacit knowledge essentially is experiential knowledge, Exper experiential contextualized knowledge that is called switcher transfer. And whereas explicit knowledge is more like codified knowledge. Um, so as you can see here, there's like two example of um, the same person with disabilities sharing knowledge in a very different way. So on the left side, you see tacit knowledge sharing, uh, where he's explaining about his own experience living with a specific disability, uh, like a specific problem that he's facing. Whereas on the right side, he's just sharing like a website that contains very codified knowledge, uh, that very abstract, high level knowledge. Uh, so kind of like tip of the iceberg kind of knowledge uh, about like, his disabilities and some existing solutions that exist uh, to address his problems. And so at the end, like out of this contest, we had 75 innovators that um, submitted a solution. Um, we found not surprisingly that the group that had more experiential tacit knowledge uh, submitted more solution than the explicit one. Um, but we found actually that the, the, the group that received knowledge about experience rather than knowledge about like facts, we're actually less innovative. So we tried to understand why, and we interviewed the innovators uh, who submitted at least a solution. And we found that in the, in the tacit group, they felt uh, overloaded with information. So they thought it was very difficult to understand from the experience that were shared, uh, what, what they had to do. So they found it was very ambiguous uh, that the, the experience were going in very different directions. And it was very hard for them to converge on specific problems to solve. Whereas in the explicit group, although they were receiving facts that are like, as I said earlier, to represent the tip of the iceberg of the knowledge, uh, it was easy for them to understand like basic stuff uh, and then converge on some specific problems to solve. But then we also interviewed the, um, the individuals with ability who participated uh, and from those interviews, we found that they felt a greater sense of inclusion in the groups where they share experience. They preferred much more sharing their own experience and their daily struggles rather than acting like consultants sharing facts. And uh, so we kind of have a trade-off where in, in one case, we can actually increase innovation outcome through the sharing of more explicit information that is easily understandable. Uh, whereas uh, in the other hand, we can actually raise awareness and give more voice uh, to people with disabilities and give them a greater sense of inclusion. So we had amazing products that were built during this contest. So here is a kind of like a, a, some of them that were really good. Um, and I would like to thanks a lot the sponsors that uh, that are here below that uh, that were really important to make this contest uh, really nice. Um, and now let me move on to our second experiment. So in the second experiment, which was also a crowdsourcing contest on Hackster, uh, we had, as I said earlier, some individual disabilities that were sharing knowledge through a one-type feedback. So innovators were tasked with identifying on their own a problem to solve and a solution to solve. And then they were given feedback on either the problem side or the solution side. So here you have two examples. So in, in the first example here on the left side, you see that uh, innovator is proposing a problem to solve. Uh, which is a problem that people with mobility impairments have a lot of difficulty uh, with writing, handwriting. And, and then the feedback he received below from an individual with disabilities is that handwriting skills don't just require motor accuracy. It depends on different sub-problems uh, that are very important. And unless you have this disability, it's actually very difficult to know about those sub-problems that remain unsolved currently. In the, in the right side, you have an example of solution feedback, so a feedback on the solution side. Uh, and so you see the innovator has in mind that he wants to, to build a smart cane with sensors uh, to navigate. And then the, um, the individual with disabilities is proposing different features that should be added to the solution to make it better. So that device weight is important, hands-free control is important, and some extra functionalities. And so we try to see if we focus more on giving feedback on, on basically changing the perception that you have, changing the problem formulation that you have on the problem side, uh, if that would actually increase innovation outcome more than if I were actually changing the, uh, the belief that you have on the solution space. And so we had 115 innovators that submitted. 
Uh, there wasn't much difference whether they were receiving problem feedback or solution feedback, uh, but we found that the problem group was more innovative, especially on generating novelty. Uh, and so then we interviewed the innovators uh, and, and the, as well as the individual disabilities. And what we found out is that um, individual disabilities actually know what to solve. So by giving problem feedback, uh, it enables problem solver to become aware of problems that have been unsolved, that remain unsolved. And so by tackling them, it leads to innovation, and especially novel novelty, because novel problems are solved. But on the other hand, those individual disability didn't really know how to solve it. And by giving feedback on the solutions, they were actually narrowing down the technological possibilities because they were using their existing knowledge of existing solutions that they know to give feedback. On the other, on the other hand, innovators knew, didn't know what to solve. Mostly, they were identifying very obvious problems uh, because they themselves don't have disabilities. So the problems they were coming up with were problems that most likely were already solved on the market. But on the other hand, they knew how to solve them. They had technical expertise. And because they came from very diverse background, they could bring you know, distant technologies that haven't been applied to the disability space uh, and try to, to see if this technology can be applied to the disability space. And so for those two reasons, uh, giving feedback on the problem side rather than giving feedback on the solution side uh, brings more innovation. And, and this is quite interesting because the literature on, on crowdsourcing or open innovation or, or, or more generally the literature on problem solving always focuses on the solution feedback. So we, we always talk about entrepreneurs or innovators uh, going on the market and getting like feedback on the solution they have in mind. And we think that we should bring forward more like the, the side of giving feedback on the problems because we, we see here that it brings more innovation that when the innovators actually don't really know the problems because they are not themselves like end user or customers, giving feedback on their problems, changing their perception of the problems will actually lead uh, to more innovation. So I have to say as well that we also had amazing sponsors uh, to make this contest possible. And uh, we, we created a box with all the different hardware from the different sponsors that participated and then send them around the world to all our innovators. And we had amazing products that were built. Uh, and so I would like to give a big thanks to our sponsor. We had even more sponsor for this one than the, than the previous contest. And we would like to continue this journey of build together. So yeah, in conclusion, uh, um, here are the QR code. Uh, here on the right side, the QR code of the two different contests, if that interests you. Uh, so we found in conclusion from build together one, that when actors are very distant, so like peaceful disability versus uh, engineers, they have very diff different knowledge set. Sharing actually very factual, uh, easy to understand, explicit knowledge would actually lead to higher innovation outcome um, because the tacit knowledge is very ambiguous and too hard to understand. Um, but on the other hand, sharing tacit knowledge may be valuable for uh, giving a sense of inclusion. So we have a kind of trade-off that we found in the first one. In the second contest, um, we found that innovators, because they are, again, not disabled, they typically identify only obvious problems to solve. They don't know what to solve, but they actually know how to solve. They can bring like interesting technologies to, to solve them. On the other hand, the individual disabilities knew what and solve problems had to be solved, but they lacked knowledge on how to solve them. So because of that, problem feedback led uh, to higher innovation outcome than solution feedback. I have to mention that we want to build uh, Build Together 3, so the third version of that contest, uh, which will start in, uh, uh, in next year. And so we're actually looking for partners or sponsors or donations. Uh, so let me know if you're interested. Uh, this slide doesn't work really well, so my email doesn't appear anymore here. Uh, but um, yeah, my, my email is just basically C, then my family name is G-R-U-M-B-A-C-H. Uh, at ethz dot, uh, ch. So with that, I would like to thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Thanks Sarah. So much. That's really cool stuff. Lots of really interesting uh, things coming out of these contests. I, I think we're going to see lots of ways to innovate and create things that are helping folks with disabilities and helping mm. folks with disabilities find ways to create things for themselves. 
And we'll grab your email and we'll put it in the chat so that people will be able to contact you easily and they'll be in all of the, the show notes for everything. So for this is just you know for anyone to know, all of these talks will be um, cut up into their own individual segments and we'll make sure all your contact information is on all of them. So but for now, Fantastic. tossing it in the chat if anyone wants to get in contact. And thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we are really excited to see what comes next. And we really, we hit our time exactly. So that was a really good time. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Well, well, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much and have a nice day. Bye. Thank you. Bye.